But this is the this is the article. It says bicep seeing Rich Leader explain big raves during the pandemic is absolutely disgusting. Belfast born London based electronic bicep duo are uh, about to release a most paid album of 2021. But they told Sean Griffiths that they had no patience for people playing shows or the UK government. So number one, I'm surprised an act like Bicep are putting out an album now without being able to tour. Um, I think we've already seen people like Drake, you know, postponing their album. And there is a rumor out there that the reason why he did that is because he was given some sort of heads up from who knows who people some some higher up elites or the illuminati gave him a heads up and let him know that hey um the world's going to reopen very soon don't release your album too early give yourself the opportunity to tour and make the most of it so you'd imagine an act like bicep you know they are a high production level performance dj duo right they don't do half measures they don't just turn up and play in front of a black screen at a club they put together an absolute performance you see what they did at print works right that show from what i saw from youtube looked amazing they really went out of their way to make that a real once in a lifetime opportunity and i'm sure those people that went to that event are chuffed that they went before the lockdown so it was surprising to see them even put out this album considering what's going on but I guess, you know, they, they went to feed their fans, their prolific producers. Um, I definitely feel them out of regard. But it's interesting to see their opinion when it comes to this playgrave pandemic that's happening at the moment, right? Um, what do I think? I think before you read the article, I think generally my thoughts have kind of wavered, I guess, like most people during the lockdown. I think most of my frustration and most people's frustration with it generally comes because you and i can't go anywhere right it's definitely something that's been reserved for the privileged few it's definitely something that's exasperated or maybe highlighted and reminded us of the inequalities and um the disparity in treatment and accessibility and just the downright unfairness of the dance music industry especially once you cut going higher and higher up the tiers and band of acts and where they go and play and it's just grossly unfair in it right that you are having to stay indoors sacrifice all your leisurely and cultural delights and things that you love to get up to with your friends but these people um are deeming themselves to be essential flying to d legitimately developing and third world countries uh uh, taking advantage of a lax government who are not really looking after their population and citizenship as they should and going there and collecting the coins and playing in front of what looks like a whole community of expats who are themselves privileged and probably part of the 1% in that country that they're living in. So it's, it's, it kind of comes a bit yicky. But now as time has gone by, I've come to the realization or I've come to just accept that it may, mainly is the responsibility of the government to have restrictions in place that prevent international DJs from flying hundreds of thousands of miles um, to come and play in a villa somewhere in a mountain, right? They should have things in place that prevent that. The moment that they leave those opportunities open in order for them to line their back pockets, however crap they may be, or to allow it to pay for a road, you know, uh, reconstruction of a road, whatever it may be, they're going to have to accept, unfortunately, the harsh consequences of it, which is, you know, a spike in cases, a spike in deaths, and all this other nonsense that comes with booking a DJ to go play an after hour set somewhere during the global pandemic. So, for the most part, I could care less. I think we have have our own issues to worry about here on our shores and again i think as a global dance community it's disappointing to see some of your more bigger acts who are you would say affluent and maybe well off who can afford to miss out on the odd rave in the middle of tulum right because that's the thing that's weird also it's i think apart from that rave in ukraine where sally c and freddie k and a few other people played from berlin right there hasn't really been any other high prof not high prof there hasn't been anything else of that scale that i've seen maybe i've missed some things but i haven't really seen it and again i think if you split up djs in tiers you'd say there's three tiers right low middle and high and in each tier there's two it's split in two again so there's low low high low blah blah, blah. so if that's the case we've seen a lot of djs who occupy the tier two and three or one and two what the the, the top two tiers playing in these play grades but we haven't really seen a lot of the 
bottom tier DJs playing these places who probably you would imagine need those gigs more so than the ones playing in the top two tiers because for the most part if you believe what you read on the internet those guys in the top two tiers earn anywhere between 5,000 euros to 10,000 to 30,000 during you know normal times I guess now maybe they've taken some sort of uh, hit on their salaries and their fees that they get paid because the places that they're playing at can't you know operate at full capacity so they can't give an opportunity to make their money back as a promoter blah de, blah 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 but still there's less tier one entry level DJs playing play graves than there are actual top top line mix mag DJ mag resident advisor headlining people playing which is this that's the bizarre thing that seems about it um so let's continue with the article and see what Bice about to say about the issue and I'll continue on um I think it's somewhere here the, 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 uh, okay cool so the whole paragraph says they settled down to make aisles in 2019, taking most of the year off touring to concentrate on writing. They didn't expect to have them make the most of 2020 off too. When the pandemic struck, in the pair were mixing and mastering the album and looking forward to two sold out nights in Brixton Academy. Their plans were scuppered, but the duo seemed sanguine about the card fate has dealt them. They said, we came to terms with everything being out of control last year. Uh, we're keen to do live shows, but it happens when it happens. They're less laid back about DJs who continue to play gigs. During the summer 2020, several high profile DJs, including Nina Kravis, Dax J, played across Europe. They were legal, but arguably ill advised, definitely not socially distanced. Seeing these established DJs who have money playing big raves during the pandemic is absolutely disgusting, says McBriar. Um, it's drawn a line between the artists who think like businessmen and strategize on how to exact as much money as possible from everything and the people who are driven by creativity. Um, they don't need to do this, Chips in Ferguson. Take a year off, write an album. So many people lower down the dance music are struggling and this paints the whole industry in a bad light. It's just that their, their egos need a constant massaging. Now, I think I've come to the realization I'm kind of cool with it and I've just moved on and I've stopped being outraged by seeing people playing Playgraves because I've come to the conclusion and realization we'll speak about next year, uh, next. But a lot of these DJs aren't really DJs. They're mostly influencers who have found a way to influence without standing around wearing loud clothes and doing those stupid poses on the gram, right? They found a way to do it. And the way they do it is playing records. So if that's the case, and if influencers first, DJ seconds, we shouldn't be judging them the same way we would judge an actual DJ, right? Because an actual DJ wouldn't, want to be seen at a play grave so they'd maybe not promote it they wouldn't take any pictures they'd want to do it if it would have to be like a corporate event done behind closed doors but they wouldn't want to you know put up a post saying oh it's the first time i'm being on a flight i can't wait to go here it's amazing during a pandemic they just wouldn't want to do it but i think these people are so i would say not say demented but they're so they're so addicted to the dopamine hits of the likes and stuff that they have no other way to get that apart from going and playing somewhere and having their hands in the air like an in DJ pose. So they would have to go and play these playgraves. So it's kind of something that they just can't avoid taking up. And of course, maybe the money's good, of course, the access, just the boredom of staying at home and not being able to play week in, week out. If you're a DJ that doesn't spend that much time at home, you know, you only have to read a couple of interviews with resident advisors to see the amount of DJs that brag about about the amount of time they don't spend at home and not with their family and they're always on the road I haven't unwrapped my furniture in my house all this sort of nonsense it's no surprise that those very same people are addicted and just can't let go of um or put a pause on their career during a global pandemic which is insane to think of right I, I think no one else's music so far has been able to perform to a level that they have been in the past right I'm sure the Arctic Monkeys would like to play a gig sometime soon but you don't see them playing plague events do you know what I mean so that's the interesting side of it so again as weird as it may be at the moment um I do think a lot of it has to obviously is has to come from we are unable to do it ourselves where you know it's not allowed the venues that we want to go to are all closed some of them will want to be opened once the, re the economy reopens anyway so we're going to lose a lot of great places and then we're seeing these people on our gram flying from you know from place to place playing in all these different exotic locations during the pandemic and effectively taking advantage of governments who are probably looking after the population as they should um and then doing it obviously to earn a quick buck 
it should it should it should bother you it should upset you but there's nothing more there's not much you can do from wherever you sit it, again it is the responsibility of the government to put into put restrictions in place that prevent people from traveling hundreds of miles to go and play at a beach somewhere if that doesn't happen then we can only concentrate on what we can concentrate on our own shores but again like i said it's a good thing because what it does do is it does open your eyes and tell you um the kind of people that you're supporting and it should kind of remind it should kind of provide you this opportunity to recalibrate who you support and who you back now not for the good or for the bad I'm not telling you who you support who you should not support but it should be a constant reminder of like okay cool there are some people who are in this for the music they're in this for the for the vibes they're in this for the culture whatever it may be right and there's some people who are clearly just in it for the self-branding the marketing purposes the likes on social media which is never a good or a bad thing it just is what it is and if that's the case choose your heroes wisely choose your dj heroes wisely <laughs>